former lightweight British champion and the former lightweight champion of the world, Rabbit the Welsh Warriors, he is Sean the Outlaw! He's been a former lightweight champion. He's been a British champion. He's been a world champion, Sean George. Ah, pretty tough, like, and now there's not a lot for us to do. Rugby, football, or the path of fighting, and where there's so many people doing it. We're all in competition, so you've got to work that little bit harder to get recognised. This tournament I've entered now is a special tournament. It all happens in one night, so four of us enter, two fight, then two fight, and then the two winners fight, then all in the same night. So, like I said, I'm 16 fights in, 10 wins, 4 losses, 2 draws, I've had numerous titles. Coming January now, you know, it ain't about the money, it's about showing up there, fighting hard, making weight like a pro, and just leaving me all the respect. I'd advise any sort of discipline, martial arts, boxing, MMA, being that well to anybody because it's stability, it's balance and you could, you could change your life around by using it like. Uh, my fighting career started all the way back in 2004. I had a bit of trouble with a gang of boys in the local area. I had to disappear off the streets where I made the decision then to uh, start some sort of martial arts. Uh, my first uh, first uh, discipline was kickboxing down in Newport with Gary Gasser, traveling back and forth Newport every day. It was like 25 miles out of my way. Um, I did that for about a year. Within a month training, I was on the bus to Chelmsford, fighting full contact up in uh, Essex, Chelmsford, yeah. And then uh, I went to Muay Thai, then I did. I did that for about 10 years alongside MMA. I was fighting an active. I had uh, three semi-pro MMA fights. I just won the British Muay Thai title after taking a fight eight days notice. My next step then was to go pro in MMA, but I come to a crossroad in my life. So I, uh, I, I took a step back from the training and the fighting for a bit, started a family, but then I felt like something was missing from my life. So I made the step back and into K1 and Thai boxing, had a few more fights to stay active, and then that's when I stumbled across this bare knuckle man. And now the rest is history. Uh, my first title shot was against Kev Bennett. Uh, he boxed all his life, all through the army, ex-Commonwealth champion. His previous opponents he put away in the first round. I'm the only one to take him to the final bell. Uh, that night he made history because he became the first uh, Bay Knuckle World Champion. Um, I ended up in hospital with a few injuries, fractured eye socket, broken nose, concussion, I had to have a brain scan. But um, even though my family begged me to stop, it didn't stop there. Within eight weeks, I'm back in the ring. As I was walking up the stairs, it was just all blood then, and you know, I was just travelling all the way upstairs, and I just looked in that bed, and his face, it didn't even look like him, and it really killed me seeing that, because I thought, oh, this is the result sometimes that you've got to go through. Even though you have so many ups, you have a lot of downs. It was a bit of a scare for us both, because you've never had any facial injuries that bad. This was the Kev Bennett fight, this was. Um, but he gained a lot of respect at that fight, because people did say to him you're going to stop. He was like, no, I'm not going to stop this fight. He, could, he had really bad eye on the one eye, couldn't see much. So he still kept going and going and going. And him and Kev are still good friends till this day. Um, but I think that's the main fight that started Sean's name kicking off, really, because I've never known somebody to take so many facial shots 
without stopping the fight or even it being stopped by the company. Um, so it just goes to show how far Sean will take the fight in and that's what worries me. That's really what worries me, but that's why he's the best. 16 fights in, 10 wins, 4 losses to the top boys, 2 draws, numerous titles. Uh, I don't know how many fights I got left in me. My time is coming to an end. Obviously, I'm a family man. I got my daughters to think about. I got a full-time job. It's easy for people to say to me, keep going, keep going. But they don't see the bigger picture. They don't see what I go through every day. They just see what goes on at night. They're quick to judge. They're quick to tell me to get back in. They are the ones who got to suffer, like, you know, like my family have. I'd advise any sort of discipline, martial arts, boxing, MMA, bare knuckle, to anybody because it's stability, it's balance, and you can, you can change your life around by using it. Yeah, i got to give a bit of credit to my partner, Abby Thorne. Like, uh, you know, she put a bit of balance in my life. She gave me my two beautiful children. You know, they're, they're my everything. They're the reason why I get up in the mornings and train so hard. I just want them to look up to me and inspire them and make them proud. He just don't care about getting hurt. He don't care about the blood. And obviously, i got to watch that. we got two little girls. And obviously in some fights, if he's cut off short, I'm not happy about it after all the work he's put through. Like, I gotta say, out of most of the fighters, he's the only one I would say that puts in the work with the training. Getting up at four, being a dad, being a partner. It's a dent in the pillow for me all the time. Um, but all I could say is basically I support him in everything he does and I love him and I know it's something he loves and fighting is in his blood. Um, and I know them girls are proud of him and like looking back, they just see photo uh, photos and on YouTube his fights. They're like, yay, daddy, the outlaw. So I know for a fact he have made them proud and that's all he wanted. That's all he've ever wanted is to make his family proud. And that's what he's done. I woke up one morning with nothing and nobody and I've reinvented myself as the person I am now. You know, I, I got my two cars, I got my two kids, I got my house, I got my full time job. I got a few qualifications. I just gained another qualification yesterday. So everything is green fields and flowers from now on. In the red corner, we have the current champion, Ayla Grace. Are you ready? Yeah. Keep your hands up, mine, protect yourself at all times. Are you ready? Yeah. Fight. <laughs> hands up, Ayla. Guard, Ayla. Hands up, Ayla. That's it, duck. Uppercut, uppercut. Whoop. Bob and weave, come on, fight. Come on, douche, douche, douche. Whee! I think Amy's a champion today. Winner! I've got a full time job. I train in the morning before I go to work. I do a full day's work in, eight to ten hours a day. I go back to the gym, then I do. And then I gotta, I gotta come up to these little buggers. Huh? It can be really hard sometimes. I live by the clock and I'm always on the clock. Whether it's eating on the clock, training on the clock, working or traveling on the clock, I'm always fighting that clock. Like So I've got to have some sort of special mentality and uh, the motivation I just get from the dedication I put in, the feedback of people, messages and things like that from all around the world. It just makes me want to push that a little bit harder. Everyone knows Sean. We go anywhere and he's like, they're like, oh, there's that binnacle fighter. And as a family doubt, sometimes I'm like, God, can't we go anywhere, man? Without people going, oh, there he is, there he is. And Sean go, I'm really sorry, but it's a family day today. Can't talk about it. Because <laughs> he do love talking about himself, may I say. <laughs> um, but basically, it do upset me when he's in the ring. But I do know that that's what he loves. And if that's what he loves, I'll support him all the way. And I have. Weight cut, that's probably the hardest thing. I call it the fight before the fight I do. Like, you know, like our last fight, I started training 12 stone, eight pounds. I don't really carry the weight to lose it. And uh, come fight day, I weighed in 10 stone, nine. Um, pff, bear in mind, I didn't eat though. I didn't drink for 27 hours. Totally dehydrated, totally depleted. No carbs for over a week. And that was around the same time that the kids was off school. So I had to prep their meals as well, you know, dinosaurs. I remember opening the oven one day, like, and these little, the smell of these little cheese sticks hit me in the face. And I didn't know whether to laugh or cry. I didn't. One of the kids dropped a crisp on the floor. You know, I'm looking at the dog. He's looking at me as if to say, who's going to have that crisp first? Like, you know. 
You'll think it's all glitz and glamour. Obviously, on the night of the fight, it is, you know, I got my little dress on and stuff like that. But leading up to the fight, obviously, Sean's cut in a lot of weight. Um, the kids are eating their smileys and chicken jetters in front of him. And he's like, oh, I really want that. And I'm like, oh, Sean, that little bit of push. And I'm just like, push, push, push. Not long now. After you've had that weigh in, now you can eat what you want. Behind closed doors, people don't really understand, like, what we got to go through as a family. Because, obviously... People seeing these videos of Sean training, oh yeah, he's an animal, he's a beast. But I gotta deal with the weight cut behind closed doors. Don't be wrong, I think I am the strongest person ever mentally to live with Sean George because I don't think half of the people would be able to. Like when you have them little evil dark eyes looking at you, you're like, okay, um, I'm gonna pop out with the dog, okay? Will you have a little chill out? I've known Sean for... Got to be going on 15 plus years, I think. First time we ever really met, we uh, we always to chip in two pound fifty each to rent a room just to go sparring, and it was it was a uh, it we none of us knew anything, and we used to just put on shin guards, shin guards and gloves and just literally lump fuck out of each other, <laughs> fucking. But uh, it's mad to see how it's progressed from where where we were to he's at the top of his game. I'm at the top of my game. It's, it's just mental to, to see where we come from and we're both doing massive things in our own sports, like. Sean is a different different breed altogether. Um, the way he trains, the dedication. Um, like I said, if he ever done it in his earlier years without stopping, he'd be something special now. Uh, never late, never late for the gym, always early. I can wake up at half past two, half past three in the morning. I got a message off him saying that uh, I'm on my way. And I sometimes wish he'd fallen in sick, like. But um, the dedication is unbelievable. Um, he's basically started where I am today. He's from training Sean, one of the first good fighters, one of the best fighters I've trained, like. He's like, when I first came over here, I started doing the coaching side of things. Um, Sean got to a level where I couldn't coach him as good to get where he is today. So then, I took off my own back and I rang Vince Kelly and said, listen, I got a boy in the gym. Um, we need to, uh, he needs to go up a level, I said, because he, he, he's, he's, he's getting good, he's getting good. And fair play to Vince, he, he came along and uh, the amount of knowledge I've learned off him, I can begin to start again with Sean where I know a lot more knowledge. I do a lot of work with Gavin Reese, ex uh, former pro champion, world champion, and I learned a lot of knowledge off him as well. So. Yeah, it's been really good. It's been a good journey to see Sean come from just a street fighter, getting Vince Cleverly involved, looking like more of a boxer, and then the knowledge of everybody put together has made Sean who he is today, and, and it's he's been amazing, like, it's been a really good journey, good journey, like. And I think BKB is, is, is a proper gentleman's fight, you know what I mean? You go in there, you fight, bare knuckle. <laughs> I would never do that, you know what I mean? And uh, you shake hands after. They're banned on Facebook before. Some people drag it out, no names mentioned, but uh, yeah, it's good. He's a proper gentleman's sport. Sean, the pull up in the morning, um, I bring him in the gym, I set the running machine up for him. We'll do like a five minute little jog, uh, start things off. We turn it to sprint set, uh, 30 seconds on, 10 seconds off, 30 seconds on, 10 seconds off. We usually go straight onto, onto the rower and do five minutes on a rower. Um, again, 30 seconds on, 10 seconds off, 30 seconds on, 10 seconds off. Um, approximately, we are on there three times, um, and we work on a two minute basis because he fights for two minutes. Then we go outside then, we do uh, the circuit, then we do the jump bar, which we, um, we do 30 seconds on. Then we'll go on to the prowler, we do 30 seconds on. Then we'll go on to the battle ropes, we do 30 seconds on the battle ropes. We'll go on to the steps, we'll do 30 seconds on the steps. We'll go on to the sledgehammers, then we'll do 30 seconds on the sledgehammers, and we rotate that every, for two minutes, we'll do about six rounds, four to six rounds on that. Um, to finish off, and we'll do the pull-ups. And then we go to the corner, we'll do the tire flipping, and again, we're on there for two minutes straight. Uh, we'll do that approximately three times as well. We then come back in the gym then, and we have a little go of a bit of cardio. We've done a bit of strength conditioning outside, We'll go on the cardio on the machines um, and we'll usually do a tobacco exercise which is like 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off, 
for four minutes on each exercise as we do in the gym. Um, we usually take about an hour, hour and ten minutes session. Sean then goes to work, I go to work, and then he comes back in in the evening then with um, world class trainer in Skyblee then. My relationship with my coaches, I've seen Jenko this morning, the door's always open for me, I take my hat off to him, but I love him so much, he's always here, he gives me the time of day, but then there's Vince Cleverly then, we got a sort of Rocky and Mickey theme, like, you know, he's Mickey, I'm Rocky, and uh, pff, I gotta take my hat off to him too, you know, every round I does, he does with me, bear in mind, he's 69 years old, been all around the world, the knowledge he got is unbelievable, Nathan Cleverly's father, World champion, Commonwealth champion, British champion, you know, he probably forgot more about boxing than anybody in this town will ever learn. Like, oh, I've been working with Sean, it's been a, a pleasure to be honest because uh, practically Sean helps me to keep going because he, he attends the gym, he keeps me going, he turns up the gym regular, uh, he's very motivated, he's uh, a proper family man. So easy to train. We met each other around about two years ago and we've been together ever since. Get him up on the pads, man. Good girl. Hey. Daddy! Daddy! Daddy, you're quiet in there. Go on. Can we sit up, see you? <laughs> Five. Matt, well don't fall far from the tree, do It's the other one you've got to watch out for, Avi. She's the fighter, not her. She follows oh, Avi. She does. Avi follows me. I wake at four o'clock in the morning, have my breakfast. I travel to the to the O2 then, a the location where the fight is. I weigh in, um, make weight, go off and have a bit of food then. It's a pretty long old day then, it is. So obviously, I just keep myself to myself. I don't watch any other fights. I stay out in the back room, just me and Vince talking on a cup of tea and whatever. Um, I fight hard then and then I jump straight in the car. I don't drink or nothing like that, so I come straight home to my family. So by the time I get home, it's probably around four o'clock in the morning again. So from the time I wake up to the time I get home, I do like a 24-hour shift, maybe 25 hours. So that can be hard sometimes, like, but my uh, biggest thing is get from the safe and just come home to my kids. Day of the fight when it's fight day for Sean. I just basically stay out of his way because I know that on his mind, he just want to have that clear mind. He want to be left alone. He just want to be left alone in his room. Because I know if I'm ringing and ringing and texting, I've learned from before, he's just like, leave me alone. I need a clear mind. So after all these years, I know that now. When Sean first started bare knuckle fighting, we did go through a bit of a bad patch because I couldn't cope. Not like with that, but it was just like, I was on my own a lot. I didn't really see him. I just felt like I was on my own with the kids all the time, didn't have much of a life. So we did go through a bit of a bad patch and this girl mailed me, I'm not gonna mention any names, but her partner's a fighter. And it was nice for her to come out to me, to message me, to say, Ab, I know how you're feeling, like, he's like this as well, so don't feel like you're alone there. Men have their selfish parts of their fighting, but it's just something they go through. And ever since that, when she mailed me that then, I thought, yeah, I get it, I get why you've gotta be in that zone and that, you know, at the moment it is all about him, it seems, but I do know he cares. But like after it's over then, it just all goes back to normal. All the family, we're all back to normal again. Intercontinental now, which is part of the O2 London. We've come up from South Wales now to take part in the BKB draw for the prize fighter, where four of the names went in the hat and Glenn McCrory, ex-Commonwealth champion, uh, picked the names out of the hat. I got drawn against James Kennelly, which I was surprised by. But um, he's going to bring out the best of me. I'm going to bring out the best of him. He's a tough, durable lad, but I'd love that fight, to be honest. I really would, any single one of them. But the Sean George fight, that's just on another level for myself. That's like going from nowhere to world level, do you know what I mean? So I'd still love to fight, though, and I'd give everything. He's a lovely guy, um, and he's a great competitor. And, you know, he's going to give his... His utmost. He's going to give the best he can. You know, he comes to win, and that's what you want. You know, that's what you want. He's he's got a fighting heart and a fighting spirit, and uh, you know he's got a great chance. As a fighter, I'm telling you, he's tough. He doesn't get hurt. He doesn't care if he gets hit, and um, he just is very active. And he's he's been around longer than me with the bare knuckle boxing. So when I came in, he was already here, which is interesting because he's the only other active like kickboxer from back in the day. He's got the power. And he's very, he's gone very quick. His speed has improved. His punching power has improved. His 
his overall technique has improved, so it wouldn't surprise me the same way if I two stoppages. Fine, I'm confident, you know, like the last fight I had to weigh in a lot lighter than I am now, so, you know, it was half the battle not making such a drastic weight cut. I'm able to eat all day, I've had plenty of water, I'm able to have a meal tonight now, I'm able to have breakfast in the morning, so all that boosts my confidence. The only thing that's getting me down is being away from home. Tonight now, Friday, I got like a ritual where I see my family, my mom, my dad, and then I spend uh, the Friday night with my kids there. And like we say, our prayers and all that. And then Saturday morning when I wake up, I do my own thing. And then I come up here in my own time then, whereas I've had to bring all that forward a day now. Like, I've had to have a day off work. I see my kids briefly this morning before they went to school, and that was the last time I seen them. And I'm stuck up here now, still in our hotel room. but. It's all, it's all sent to try us. I do feel a bit selfish on my family that I'm still fighting, but you got to look at the bigger picture. Like, I've got my house and half from this. Like, and now I've got money in the bank. I've got a good image about me. So there's pros and cons to it, isn't it? Our oh, mum has made me a cake, so she made me a coconut uh, sponge cake with Freo Rochers all over it and Buenos, and they got Nutella running through the middle. And I'll probably be sat in McDonald's drive through Sunday morning with five grand and a nice prize fight a belt on the back seat. Waited for my double McMuffin meal. <laughs> Sacrifice and took myself away from it. And I have double crisps, chocolate, ice cream, pop, Chinese, McDonald's, chips, curry, fish, everything, isn't it? <laughs> Food porn. <laughs> ah, I just want to show that, you know, you can be in the depths of hell and come back, but and turn your life around by using some sort of martial arts, boxing, bare knuckle, in my case, like, you know, people look down on this sport, but. They've changed my life, and like I said, and it's, it's not a hobby to me, it's a lifestyle now. I couldn't go to the gym and just knock about on the bag, knowing that I haven't got a fight lined up. You know, I got a fight train all the time, I have, so yeah, I just I'd advise it to anybody for that uh, discipline, you know, balance. Just, just everything's all rolled up into one, like. Hi, Dab. Hi, Anna, right? Hello, hi, Dayla. Hi. What's happening? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we done the draw, we did. I got James Canelli first. I'll speak to you yeah. now. I got James Canelli first, sort of uh, blew me away a bit, to be honest. I didn't think I was going to get him, but um, he's probably the toughest one in there, so he'll probably bring the best out of me and he'll bring the best out of him. But uh, I'm missing the girls already. And, uh, yeah, all done now. Yeah, they on the play zone, Hello. Look at Shy, you, babe. Good luck. Give me a kiss. Good luck. Say good luck, Daddy. Team Outlaw. See, Team, Team Outlaw. Outlaw. You don't have to worry, babe. Daddy's all right, okay? And Daddy will speak to you after, all right? Give me a kiss. Kisses. And Avi. And Mammy. And Archie. Arch. Archie. <laughs> Get on your mat. Daddy. Where's the daddy? Here he is. Give me a kiss, Arch. <laughs> So yeah, when I get back to the old town now, I'll give her a ring and I'll speak to the kids then properly, right? Yeah, so what's the other draw then? Well, James Connelly I got, and then you've got Matt Piper and uh, Connor Tierney. It's me and James Connelly fighting first, he's out first, I'm out second. And then we've got to go behind the curtain and keep warm while the other fight's happening. And then they call right. us back in and they will. Love you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Ciao, babe. Bye. Good. Yeah. My mom's probably worried. She hates it now. She does right from tonight now till Sunday till she hears back off me. She's going to be sat in suspense, like, you know, worried, thinking she's going to get that call off someone else and not her son, like, you know. Uh, yeah, priority is just getting home safe to my family, you know. It's all good going out there, throwing down and getting hurt, but uh, I just want to go home safe, like, it would be nice to go home with that five grand and safe, but just get home safe is priority. I'm going in there to win. You know, I've trained for two whole months of this to win this tournament. The thing about the BKB guys is most of them are very respectful. There's not, not much trash talk that goes on, which is a, a breath of fresh air, really. We, don't, we sell the tickets because we're, we're, we're fighters. We don't sell the tickets because we're not to talk shit. You know, and, and that's, that is exactly its entirety. You know, like, you, you come in here and you're warriors. You have to be warriors to come see you. you, you most of the people who come boxing, they're boxing well, they're being pro good fighters. They've left early. You know, they've had the go and they've gone straight away. So it's, it's good to see that the guys that are sticking around and, and have proved themselves over and over.
Johnny Lawson and Robin Deakin. Put your hands together and give them a warm welcome to the sky. There's a bar sign up here, was there? Nice one, buddy. Appreciate the support. Thanks, man. Awesome, man. I've been doing BKB now for um, a number of years. Um, very well organised. We have to make sure that all the guys are fit and proper before they get in the ring. I have to make sure that the pre match are done uh, and that there's no complications if there should be a problem in the ring. So we have to look at their medical history, uh, make sure the blood gases are okay, the blood pressure is okay. And then once we come out the ring, then we do it all again in the post-fight medical to make sure that they're fit before we sort of release them back into the big wide world. So we just done the weigh-ins now in the old 2 London. I started training for this camp, 81 kilos. I weighed in 74.6. You can see the mutual respect between me and James Canelli already. Uh, we was we was drawn first to fight on the prize fight, the first fight. Uh, he comes out first, I come out second, and then uh, we get it on. He haven't given too much of his game plan away, I haven't given too much of my game plan away. It's respect all the way through, you know, it's business at the end of the day, it's nothing personal. We'll have a fight, we'll share each other's blood, and then we'll shake on it and be friends forever. But, um, yeah, looking forward to it now, buzzing, going out some food now. We feed, we fill, and uh, chill then. Eh? Pot of tea and a Welsh cake. Speak to my kids back home, family, and uh, boost the mood, getting them, getting them out then. Eh? Ready, boss. Ready, son. Yeah, this is the same sort of food I eat for like six to eight weeks with my fight camp, chicken and rice. So I try and stick to this diet now until tomorrow. And then that's when I'll pick out then on everything that I deprive myself on from weeks, chocolate, crisps, ice cream and things like that. But only for one week, I'll go back to eating clean and I will like. So yeah, chicken and rice all the way. Yeah, I usually eat um, chips, garlic bread and everything, but because I'm on a keto diet, I'm sticking to just chicken. You know, <laughs> 18 days now, aren't I? Had since uh, New Year's Day, killing me. And I eat what I like. When you want. When you want. They're tough guys, proper tough guys. I said because you know you see some of the faces after the fight, or one punch, you know, can bring a, you know the faces out here, or a cut, or and they're all, you know what gets me is the respect for each other after, before and after the fights. You know, especially like it's quite brutal what you know the, the fights that they're doing and the injuries that they're getting, and it's they're all friends afterwards. Sean George is one of the best fighters on the circuit. He's not just a fantastic fighter; he's a fantastic guy. The sport doesn't just need great fighters; it needs great ambassadors. And Sean is one of the great ambassadors of the sport as well. He's very polite, he's very civilized, he's very dignified, and he can fight. All this, Ayla drew this for me, and your love on me. I love you, Daddy. You're the best. And she put her heart and soul into that show. Yeah, I see my girls as my little angels, like, you know, when I go out there now, I got one on each shoulder, A.V. and Ayla, and they just keep me safe. I always have Ayla's name on my right hand, and I always have Avi's name on my left. I don't know why, I just do. Both going through it like an old man as me, she yeah. is as well. I'm taking the blows, so is she. She got to the pieces out tomorrow when I'm in bed, with ice cream, watching Rocky. Yeah. So I'll be happy when you buy a shea box and we all have Yeah, it's my shea box tomorrow. <laughs> Tandoori chicken, chips and a kebab. Hit the bread, pop, ice cream. Yeah. I <laughs> just want to thank all my supporters, everybody making the trip to the O2, my family for supporting me all the way, my sponsors who've been here from the first fight to this one, my coaches, my work colleagues, 
everybody in Wales really like. I know it's not just me up here. I got the all of Wales behind me like. But uh, yeah, I just want to give a shout out to my little girls, Ayla and Avi. They're the reason why I do this. If I feel like I'm hurt or, you know, I just got to think to myself the reason why I'm doing it for my girls. And that's enough about to get that little power, power up, I call it. But uh, yeah, I miss them. I miss them already. But like that little bit of fear is what's gonna keep me on my feet and keep me sharp, like you know. That's what's gonna keep me on my toes and stop me taking them blows. I'll just ride the shots. It might clip me, but I won't get caught with a full force because I'll just ride it, I will. My dad, just getting ready now. I am all wrapped up, all ready. Just waiting right, game now. Right. You right? I'm I will, Dad. Is Archie, is Archie all right? It's gonna be three rounds, both fights in there, so it's six rounds all together. Oh, right. Easy work. Is Archie all right? Is Archie all right? Yeah. Right, old oh, dad, I'll see you tomorrow, right? right. Yeah. Right. I love you, dad. Bye, oh, dad. Bye. Right. So good. Happy now, I am, see? It's my dad, my number one. That's probably the last phone call I'll make to my family now. So, I'm ready. That's the words of wisdom of my daddy. It's all I need. And also, former lightweight champion of the world, Revin the Welsh Warriors, it's Sean, the Outlaw
shots, I couldn't get my composure, you know, I just, just couldn't find my feet in there, like, you know, I got beat by the better man, but, you know, I got nothing bad to say about them, you know, this is BKB, fight number 17 for me, I've had all the titles, I'm still a legend, I'm still a veteran, I'm next to go in the Hall of Fame now, I go to my kids nice and safe, but that's my title, but that's my priceless uh, achievement tonight, uh, the, the love of everybody, the support and all that, I can't thank them enough. I've got to ask this. The last one we're gonna see Sean George ever again. We'll see me again, don't worry about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I like that. Thanks, you're right. I think it's already healed up. Yeah, it is, man. Just a little cut, isn't it? How are you feeling now? You're right. but yeah, a bit gutted I am, like, I know. Silly, really, doing silly shots, getting caught, you know. Everything we just done in the dressing room, I didn't fucking do. Just the heat of the moment, isn't it? You lost your mind. I don't think you need any blue in any No, I might, but Wolverine, man. Yeah, you can't play. All I need is a McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, I'm so used to five or seven rounds, yeah. like, you know. Three rounds, are you just getting warmed up in here? I catch my second win after round three, but that's just excuses, that is. I got beat by the better man, but, you know. Well, that's what I mean. Like, all the fights we've had before, and you know that you've won, and there's been draws and wherever, right? This one, you know you've lost. Yeah, this one. Someone's got to win it, though. Someone, someone had to lose, but someone had to win. Listen, going home safe to my kids, but that's my priority. Live to fight another day. Live to fight another day. And two cut video. I'm going for you. Yeah, man, trust me. Have you heard the phrase no sense, no feeling? Have you heard the phrase no sense, no feeling? You all know the score. If you Google it, <laughs> you look at it. Can you go get me a pint of Coca Cola or Abba while they stop the bar? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what you're talking about. 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 I'm not sure what you're talking Still got to work Monday. <laughs> you ain't got to have that stupid bird bath at four in the morning. No, though. I don't. Not for a while, anyway. Maybe <laughs> yeah, forever. Yeah, I'm loving it. That's you, mate. Nice one, brother. Thanks, man. Cheers for looking after me. No, that'd be silly. Good luck with it, yeah? Yep, cool. Oh. Someone had to lose, boys, and I, you know, say I'm in the feet, I will, but yeah, I'm still yeah. a legend. Just going downstairs, are too much for now. Yeah. Right downstairs, you kept catching me on the left up. Okay. Wasn't doing that, but we yeah. was just fucking doing it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can go in there with the game plan sure. all they want, but it all got the window, but in the heat of the moment. Yeah, but he, he is a good boxer, man. Yeah, he is, but. And you've got to understand, he's been training yeah. with all different aspects of boxing, we've been training with Tyler. Well, I had his respect, though, but you know, that's well, it's still priceless. Warrior, but. Right, 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 right to the end of the fight, it could have gone either way. Yeah. i got to be honest. Rocked him in the first, didn't I? Yeah. And it could have gone either way. Yeah. Better man one on the night, it is what it is. Going home safe to my kids is priority. Like I said, take a positive from this now. I'm next going to Hall of Fame. BKB Hall of Famer. 17 bare nickel fights. 10 wins, 5 losses, 2 draws. I've had the British middleweight, the like British lightweight, the lightweight world title, featherweight contender, prize fighter. You know, what a fucking story. I don't know what's next for me. We'll wait and see. Yeah. Come here, my little warrior. Oh. Love you. You don't look short. 
I need a bit, you don't worry, that's it. Nice kebab, now we'll be going with some mm. sex. <laughs> yes! Can I watch? <laughs> no, thanks. Can I watch? <laughs> <laughs> He's yourself. a man to man, he is, right? You need to wind this up all the way home down this car train, you need to wind this up, right? Well, stay with. And sometimes I can't tell if he's being serious or not. He is joking. He is joking. Right? Just relax, man, here. That's it now, on to them kids, but. Back to work and the day after. I'm not sure, but to be honest, like in one hand I want to quit, and then in the other hand I want to fucking come back and redeem myself from this loss. Like, you know, it's hard to walk away from, but this is the image I built. Now I'm the alcohol, this is all I know. There's going to be a big gap to fill. Then again, I don't want to be injured, I don't want to be hurt, I don't want an injury to be the reason I got to stop. So I got to go home now, I got to sit with my coaches, I got to sit with my family, and um, see what's what then. I don't want to make no hasty decisions now, like, I don't want to say one thing and I go back on it, you know. I gotta think what's right for me now and my future. Yeah, it's all good sitting there feeling sorry for yourself. Should have, would have, could have. The quicker you get back up and go back to the drawing board to get back in the gym, the quicker you can move on from it. Like you know, like even though I've lost tonight, now I'm still gonna get treated like a winner. Well, this is so. why I said it's like I spoke to Chelsea earlier. I was like, it was nice to see him and James Canelli on the interview last night. So respectful. Like I have seen a lot of fights that it was respectful on the night of the fight. It comes till after the fight. You were a lot of backlash and a lot of words being called. But like a lot of fights, they've had to work their way up. The same as Sean, I've had to work his way up to get his name. But you've got a lot of people, have a little slander, I think they're a little, you know, gift of the gab, like, you know. Have a couple of fights and get chucked in with the lions and see how we feel then, innit, but. These wounds are gonna heal now in a couple of days, but my legacy is gonna live on. It wasn't the outcome I wanted, but it's back to the drawing board, back into the gym. For me, it'll be back to work Monday, everything's back to normal. This is just a weekend thing. I've got a family and everything back at home, so they're most important. Work Monday, crack on as everything. How it goes, part of life. This, this is just a bit of fun, really. Literally just a bit of fun. Might not look it, but we all love it. All us fighters love every single bit of it, and the cuts and bruises are trophies we wear.